Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, everyone. I am uh, Bob Wolsey. I'm the head of department for the film production program here at Vancouver Film School, and I am very lucky and honored to be joined by uh, Shakun Badra from India. Um, Shakun is a, a writer, director, award-winning, I might add, uh, producer, creator. Is there any hyphenates I'm missing, Shakun? No, thanks, Bob. This is a, a very good introduction, and I'm already very happy to be back to my alma mater and excited to have this conversation. Yeah, I was actually telling Elena, um, our host for this, uh, before we got started here, I looked up your uh, file here at the school. We were at the school at the same time. I was in the writing program while oh. you were in the film program. Yeah. Wow. I sometimes wish I'd done the writing program because after I left film school, I realized that writing was the harder part. Directing is like maybe a touch bit easier. So, yeah. Yeah, writing, you're kind of off all by yourself with nobody uh, around. And then with directing, at least you've got the other department heads to kind of help you solve problems, right? Yeah, I also think like I always call, uh, you know, writing is the true creation and then directing is interpretation of that creation, you know? And I feel like it just uh, it just makes my life at least easier having something on the page. It, I mean, I'm not by no way saying directing is easy but you know it is at least not um it doesn't give you existential crisis most of the time but writing does yeah no i've i've been there that's for sure um yeah. let's uh let's go back to a little bit to the beginning um what originally made you fall in love with film like as a kid what are some of the movies that that shaped your ideas about cinema and and filmmaking and wanted you to get into it you know, I actually wasn't even sure if uh, film was a career for me uh, till very late. In fact, I Vancouver uh, Film School was a bit of an escape for me. I wasn't even sure if I was going to pursue filmmaking at that point. I was doing photography before that. And it's only when I came to film school, I started watching all these amazing films and filmmakers that I connected with that I started to feel may maybe this is something I'd like to do as, as a career option. So. As I said, it happened late for me. Uh, I was watching movies, but nothing that was like making me feel like I need to make movies myself. But once right. I came to film school and I think uh, started watching uh, some of Woody Allen and uh, the American independent cinema, Paul Mazursky, uh, you know, I think those are the films that kind of started to make me feel like, oh, this could be interesting. And yeah, th those things kind of led me to finally coming to Mumbai and trying, uh, trying, you know, assisting a bunch of directors. And assisting directors gave me that confidence of seeing them up, up and close and be like, oh, I, I think this is something I can do too. And right. from there, you know, it was just like uh, a learning uh, process and then trying to, you know, a bit of trial and error. So that's that. That's excellent. Um, moving uh, across the world to go to film school, though, was a pretty big decision. What led you to to want to like an escape makes sense, um, but why Vancouver Film School? Uh, there's a funny story to that. Uh, my my parents wanted me to go to business school, and uh, I was going to go to the U.S. My visa got rejected. And then suddenly I had uh, two years to contemplate if I really want to go to business school. And then I realized I didn't want to go to business school. And I wanted to just get away from uh, home for a while for some clear thinking. And I was already into photography. And then I thought I'll become a cameraman. And then I was looking up online, okay, where can I learn how to operate a movie camera? And uh, I think uh, I, it, I came across Vancouver. As I said, U.S. was not an option. I didn't have the visa to go into the country. And then I started right. looking at Canada. And then obviously Vancouver was, was like the best school possible in, 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 in Canada. And I was like, all right, sounds, sounds like it's one year of my time. I get to go away, learn something. Uh, I saw some pictures of Vancouver online. And I was like, this is such a pretty city. And that's it. It was, it was one of those things, you know, and, um, and rest, as they say, you know. Yeah, no, pretty big leap of faith, for sure. How was your experience living away? Did you get sort of that perspective? And I, I, I guess, because you've continued with film, but um, did you sort of get that distance from home and that clarity you were looking for? A hundred percent. I think uh, 
I recommend that to everyone, actually, uh, you know, that one year away from just your usual crowd, because it, it takes away all the conditional thinking and you can really start to think for yourself. Uh, and I always, you know, regardless of what career path you take, I always recommend taking a year away from your family and, and just or even your same set of friends, because then you fall into a pattern. And when you break that pattern, you go away for a while, you start to think for yourself, you start to ask yourself the real question, what do I really like? What do I love? Is this something I like to do for the rest of my life? Do I feel this is meant for me? You know, you ask yourself those questions at an early age. And then, you know, uh, those decisions are big decisions and they pay off. So highly recommend that time, you know, and it, it always to have been a lovely city like Vancouver, where you can take the nice nature walks, be by the ocean, go for a hike. And those things kind of really help, you know? Totally. No, I, I, I agree hundred percent. It's one of those things where I think kind of like, you know, what we do with our characters, you got to challenge yourself a little bit. And when you're a young person and you don't have a lot of responsibilities to other people, it's a perfect time to get out and really kind of test your mettle and see who you are. So you finish your year at Vancouver Film School, you go back to India, and I guess you decide that you have to make the move to Mumbai. You're originally from Delhi, right? New Delhi? Yes. And so is it still that same? I know that in a lot of countries around the world, you know, we go around the world and, and teach these workshops everywhere. And it seems like the um, the markets have opened up a little bit as streaming services are really pouring a lot of money into countries that traditionally were kind of monopolized by these two, three companies. Is India similar that way? Like, is it still like Mumbai is the, the center and, and, you know, there's a couple of other kind of hubs, but Mumbai is the big place or is it kind of opening up more? Like today, would you have to do the same thing? Do you think? Uh, well, it depends also. I mean, in India, we have so many different languages. It also depends on what language you speak. So yes, if you're talking about Hindi film industry, uh, that's primarily uh, Mumbai. Uh, and then obviously you have Tamil and Telugu and Malayalam, uh, which is further down south. And depending on what language you speak, what what language you want to make your movie on, you got to be in that city. You know, it's uh, right. so I guess it's slightly diverse in that way. Uh, so I am primarily uh, Hindi and English speaking. And for me, Mumbai made more sense. But I have friends, you know, who work down south. And as you know, uh, including RRR, these are films that yeah. are coming from, uh, not from Mumbai. They're coming from, you know, a southern part of India. And now that industry is so booming and huge and in some way truly challenging the, the, the you know, the previous norms of Hindi film industry being uh, the, the, the main, uh, you know, front leader. That's excellent. And so you mentioned you were assisting some directors like, like the, the main question that all of the, the film students that come through the school normally have is just sort of how do I get there? And so everybody's got their own story and it sounds like this move to Mumbai worked out. And so how did you end up kind of parlaying this into eventually becoming a director? Walk me through the steps. You get to Mumbai. Um, I, I, I kind of yeah. gather from the, the family background and wanting to go, your family wanting you to go into business that you didn't have a ton of connections. How did you kind of break through? Well, so, um, you know, I, I was obviously a bit clueless when I came in and I, I think it's okay to realize that you're not going to know how every part fits. You know, I think you have to take a little bit of the chances. You have to move to the city, reach out to as many people as you can. I mean, at that time, there was no Instagram. You had to just try sh show up to an office or write an email or try text somebody to give you their time of day. And I think that's really what it is, is you, and I think today's time, how, uh, you know, it, it's different. So I would tell you how I did it, then then I'll tell you how it is done today and how, how I look forward to connecting with people today. So how I did it is got a bunch of, um, you know, contacts and email IDs and office addresses and started to kind of just reach out and be like, hey, this is my resume. This is my showreel. I'm looking to join at any opening position, you know, intern, DA, uh, and 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 started to do a bunch of interviews. How it works today is, is maybe slightly differently. I think Instagram has become a, a bit of your showreel place. I think people now, when I'm looking to hire assistants, I generally go on the Instagram page, see the kind of work they've been doing, and uh, and 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 try to gauge what kind of creative and aesthetics uh, you know sense do they have, and does that kind of in some way connect with mine. If they are writers or wanted to be writers, I ask for their writing samples. We read their writing samples and see if this is something that's going to work uh, for our teams, our writing teams. Um, 
but uh, yes, so I think th that that's slightly different. It's easier to make make connections today because of Instagram. You can you know send a polite DM to ask them what's the right email address to reach that reach out to them. You can send them your work links. Um, right. And and uh, you know I have to say people are always looking for talented people. So if you're talented, if you've done some work, uh, I think there are two rules actually, which are slightly outside of this, which I think really work to get get a job. One is don't be a snob, snob. And uh, because I think a lot of film school kids come out and they just have this chip on their shoulder that they already know how to do it. And they want to go yes. out and tell people how to do their job, which very soon you realize that it's a very different world and the pressures are very different. You know, it's like practicing a sport in, in a small little thing and then coming out and playing in, in front of a big crowd. And I think it's it's realizing that soon enough and then knowing that, Yes, uh, you know, you may have some really good ideas, interesting ideas, but you got to wait for that turn, you know, uh, and you have to kind of play it as a teamwork. And the second thing is, is show up, be disciplined, have a routine, you know, and I think um, that's something when you when you're working with new newcomers, you want to make sure that they're disciplined, they have a routine and they, you know, you know movie making has such demanding schedules and it has such... Um, you know, stressful routines that you want somebody who's going to be showing up happy for those things, you know, uh, and they're here for the right reasons. You know, they're here because they want to tell stories, they want to learn. So I think those things are important. Um, but uh, I think in terms of access, it's not as tough as before. There is a lot of crowd, there is, so you have to have, make sure that you have work that speaks for itself. Uh, but yes, opportunities are immense and uh, there's always new people uh, joining different teams, different movies. So, yeah. That's awesome. And so <clears throat> you work as an assistant for a while and, and I guess at a certain point along the way kind of develop yourself as a writer because you know I see that that pretty much uh, I guess everything you've directed um, you've also had a hand in writing so how do you kind of make that that transition into the the writer director sphere you know when I moved to India and Bombay and I started assisting I very early on realized that um, uh, uh, it's it's hard you know in this city to find material or at least I didn't find material I connected with you know yeah. I think uh I think solo writing professions is is something that's um in the last five or seven years really uh mushroomed up also because of you know OTT platforms Netflix Amazon they're commissioning a lot of development work but when I came in um at that time there was a lot of um people writing their own stuff because it was hard to come by a good script that was out there in the market, you know? Uh, and when you are starting out, you know, you don't have the money to pay a writer. You got to do stuff yourself. So I realized that I will have to learn how to write. And that's why in the beginning, I said, I wish I'd done the writing course because I realized that I actually didn't pay that much attention to my <laughs> writing curriculum. And, and when I came back, I had to, thankfully, I had the list of all the books and things I had to read to learn, go back to understanding, you know, everything from Robert McKee to Sid Field to Blake Snyder to whatever. I was just like reading everything. Uh, and, you know, then it's a lot of trial and error. You are watching a lot of films, asking yourself what kind of film you want to you wanna write. And then finding the characters and worlds and situations that you want to write about. Uh, so it was it was really a, a, a learning curve, a, a hard one. Uh, it didn't come easy. I had a friend, she just was naturally gifted with a writing talent. Uh, and she was a hairdresser, not even a writer. And, and she and I just started working together and tried to come up with the first script. And thankfully, um, my first script got, got picked, uh, you know, and I had been an assistant on many movies. In India, it works slightly differently. I think uh, in the West, you know, the first 80, second 80 route goes, takes you to becoming a line producer and a producer. In India, aiding uh, route takes you to directing, which is kind of oh. funny because aiding is a little more production-like. But in India, if you're an AD to good, like interesting directors, they allow you to take chances uh, in, in directing. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a different route than as some of, some of my classmates uh, in the West have followed. But in India, that, that pays off. Interesting. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely. I always tell students, uh, especially the ones interested in directing, that if you want to be a director, you have to direct because there's no 
straight line. So that's really interesting. I didn't realize that about uh, the Indian kind of way of doing things. So yeah, I, I, my, my dogs in the background, I think trying to catch pigeons, but oh, there's that's okay. Come into dogs the house. Are... <laughs> uh, let me just open the window. I have to, sorry, pause this for a second. The... No, 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 please do. Please yeah, do. Right. Yeah. 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 No, dogs, uh, my dog is laying down here next to me because um, I knew that she would whine outside the door if I didn't let her in. So I want to take a moment to welcome everybody. I see that we've got people from around the world here, India, Toronto, Vancouver, Brazil, uh, Toronto, Mumbai, Washington. This is great. Australia. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to be opening up for questions here in a little bit. So uh, if you have any questions for Shakun, get them uh, percolating and we'll uh, we'll call out for those questions in a little bit. You saved your dog. Or you let him out, I guess. It's the pigeon, actually. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, so your first script uh, gets picked, and uh, this is the your debut feature that you directed, right? Yeah, actually, yeah. That was uh, my first script uh, and my debut film, yes. And I'll let you say the title, because I will butcher it. Sorry? I will let you say the title of the film, because if I try and say it, <laughs> I will sound like a colonialist white person. I, I just really want to hear you say it now, though. <laughs> uh, should I give it a shot? Yeah, go for it. All right. Ekmane or Ektu? Yeah, no, not bad. That's pretty close. Not it's Ekme ek or Ektu. It's not men, but it's yeah, it's Ekme ek, ek or Ektu. That means, uh, you know, I mean, it's an old Hindi song, very popular song that means I mean, kind of one me and one you, but it, it, it makes sense in Hindi. It's a different, you know, it's a different language. So, yeah, That's it's, awesome. it sounds different. Well, and, and, and so you get you get your shot to, to direct with a script that you've put together uh, that I guess you co-wrote with your, your hairdresser friend. And so how did that I mean, go? Now she's, now she's, she's uh, you know, multi-hyphenate. As I said, she's, she's one of the biggest hairstylists in the country and she's, she's a very popular writer. So it's pretty cool. That's fantastic. So walk me through this first feature. Uh, you know, what, what was it like? Uh, what did you learn uh, kind of being behind the, at the helm for the first film? Well, I think the first feature was an eye opener in terms of uh, it took, uh, it made me, it humbled me down. Uh, it made me truly realize, made me respect uh, other directors more, uh, made me less cynical about other people and their work. And I realized it's a lot of hard work. Um, so yes, I think uh, it, 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 it also made me realize that it's not, uh, you know, I mean, I, I agree. It's not, it's not, it's not that, you know, it's not rocket science, but at the same time, there's so many things involved, so many moving parts involved that uh, for any film that you watch uh, as a filmmaker, you, you have to realize that the, the storyteller, the director was also working through a lot of chaos to kind of tell you that film, you know, the chaos of production, the chaos of budgets, the chaos of, day-to-day uh, -day, uh, problems that crop up on set. And um, even though I had been an AD, as I said, and I'd been on, you know, three or four movie sets and I'd assisted some fantastic directors, including Errol Morris, who's an Oscar winner, you know. Yeah. Uh, the head and I, yeah, and, I, and I'd assisted a bunch of them. I had seen um, what a set can be like. And I feel that's one, one thing I highly recommend to all upcoming filmmakers. Be on a movie set. Try be on film set as much as you can, so you understand that atmosphere. You know, it's it's a, uh, you know, it, it can be really chaotic. And as a director, you have to find your place of calm. And and for me, even though I'd learned all of that, it's slightly different when when the whole responsibility is on you. And I think that was kind of uh, overwhelming, but also, as I said, humbling, and realizing that you have to have done all your prep, all your thinking, uh, you know, all of as much work in advance, uh, especially for your first film as you can, because, because on the day of the shoot, there'll be 300 other things that'll be going wrong. But as you obviously, as you make more films, as you have your, your kind of team, which, which understands you more, it becomes slightly easier. Uh, so yeah, my first film, oh, Pitching wasn't that hard. Un you know, fortunately, that process uh, was easy. I had worked with a bunch of directors who recommended me to other producers. I had a friend who was an, who was an up-and-coming actor 
who became very popular and he wanted to do the film. So the pitching part became slightly easier. But after that, uh, you know, the challenges were really like, okay, how do I make this work? How do I make the scenes work? But we are running out of time. We are running out of tight on budget. Uh, you know, the edit wasn't feeling like it was coming together. You know, um, uh, you know, all those things were were a lot of lot of um, interesting learnings. And um, and I mean, it's constantly been it's it's been a constant learning. It's not stopped even now. And I still think about movies. You finish one film, you move on to the other, and it feels like you're literally going to start again. You know, there are certain things you understand, and certain things you just have to go and go through again and again. You know. It's true. Yeah. No, and I always feel like whenever a big project completes, it's always one of those things where you know how hard it is. Like you, you really know how hard it is. There's a little bit of that naivete that you start with that I think is good for filmmakers when they don't realize quite how hard it is because you just kind of go in full bore, you know, but, um, but you did not suffer from any kind of sophomore slump. Your follow-up film was Kapoor and Sons, right? Yes. And that seems to be um, quite a, you know, a, a well-regarded film. I know you won a bunch of awards for it. Um, how did that film come together? So that was a harder one, actually. You know, funnily enough, uh, in terms of getting my second film set up, I had a much harder time uh, because, uh, you know, just to, in terms of Indian context, it dealt uh, with... Um, a coming out of the closet story and homosexuality wasn't the norm or it's still not the norm for a mainstream film. Uh, and the film has was, very much a very current feel to it, even now, because I, I was surprised to see that it came out in 2016 when I watched it the other day, because it feels very of the day now. Oh, thank you, Bob. Um, uh, I think, uh, yes, I think it was something I, me and my writer Aisha really wanted to explore, right? We wanted to tell a family story. You know, we'd grown up um, in India, but I think the films that were coming out, uh, that the way the fam Indian families were being depicted in Indian films, that felt a bit like distant. It didn't feel felt like it was it was what we grew up with. So we wanted to kind of share our kind of feeling or what it, what what a what a kind of family that's breaking apart feels like in India. So we were writing that, and you know, we we took about a year to write it. But there were no takers for for a year, and this is after I've already, uh, you know, a multi film deal signed with this one of one of the best um, Indian studios. Uh, it was still very hard to kind of find actors that could get us the budget we wanted. So it, it was a year of just kind of patiently waiting, even trying other ideas and things because I wasn't sure if this will get made. And then once it happened, I knew I had a short window, uh, but we had an insanely great crew. Uh, and, you know, uh, thankfully, it was a film that was contained mostly in one location. So it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't something that was production wise um, too expansive. And then we just really, you know, I had that one year that I was waiting at home to kind of think about the film, think about how I wanted to kind of shoot it, how I wanted it to feel. So I used that time to kind of just improve on what that film should feel like. Right. And as I said, I was really inspired from a lot of American independent cinema of the 80s. Um, and, and I was like, or the 60s, 70s, uh, that was really, you know, uh, you know, as I said, Woody Allen, Paul Mazursky, uh, you know, uh, Hal Ashby. Uh, uh, these were the kind of filmmakers that uh, I was trying to find that voice in India, you know, and, and, and that really is where I was coming from when I was, I was making Kapoor and Sons. And yes, it all worked out. And I, I'm really thankful for that film because it really, you know, it really helped me kind of have a, a, a career in filmmaking. Um, and yes, it's been, it's been good since then, you know? Yeah. No, it's interesting that you sort of cite those, those um, influences because I think the film is very kind of sneaky in its expectations in that way, where you feel like it's going to be kind of this wacky oddball comedy, but there's actually some really, some really kind of deep drama going on with the family, um, you know, and you, your use of sort of the handheld camera at times to kind of gives it that, that, you know, sort of uh, indie cinema feel, but then at the same time, it's also quite polished. It's a very interesting film. I'd recommend it for uh, for anybody out there in Canada. It is available on Canadian Netflix because that's where I watched it just the other day. 
Um, so people should go and check it out. Um, so obviously winning a bunch of awards for a film opens a bunch of doors for you. Um, and then the next couple of projects that I see on your filmography, you know, there's another film, obviously, uh, but a, another doc, uh, sorry, a documentary, which I guess maybe was a little bit of kind of the Errol Morris uh, influence. But uh, talk a little bit about your your subsequent projects and kind of where you're at with your directing career now. Yeah, that uh, documentary is something I executive produced. I think IMDb shot that credit out there because uh, while we were making that documentary, we hit COVID and then the directors had to move on to something else. So it, the project wow. kind of was a bit abandoned and I had to step in to wrap it up. Um, but it was, uh, so it, you know, I, I think if some of the people may have seen Wild Wild Country, which is uh, an Emmy award winning documentary with, uh, it's about the Indian a commune that turned into a cult in America and was sent back. Uh, and I had, uh, funnily enough, been a huge follower of that of that commune. Uh, my parents were believers of, of Osho. Um, and I was following that story for a very long time. I had the life rights for the main person uh, uh, called Sheila. And no, she was coming why? back to India. She was coming back to India after 35 years and Netflix uh, got in touch and they wanted to make a documentary about her coming back to India. So yeah, as I said, I had the life right. So it, it organically turned into a project uh, with different directors that was directing that. And then, as I said, COVID hit, uh, it became, you know, a tough project to manage. I was trying to go into my next feature and then we kind of had to put it together. Uh, I would do it differently now. Uh, but it was a great experience to try nonfiction, a very different uh, ball game. Uh, you know, it's literally right writing, but with right, you're writing with footage. You're writing with what you've already shot. So you're back syncing your writing to what you have. And oh uh, yeah, it was it was hard. It was new. Uh, I'm not sure if nonfiction is something that uh, is meant for me or excites me as much. Uh, I am somebody who likes to be on set and shooting with the purpose of like exactly what I'm doing. Writing is something I enjoy now. It's hard, but I look look forward to it. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll hopefully try to do nonfiction again, but not as uh, you know again more more like a producer, not something as a director. I think it's a very specific craft needs very specific kind of skill set and and uh definitely a really cool upcoming uh directors in india now you know we had two uh, two nominations this year uh we had uh sean mcsane who was nominated for best documentary at the oscars we have uh you know karthiki gonzalez who won the the best um non-fiction uh thing for elephant whisperer elephant whisperer on netflix so that that set of filmmakers are really coming into the market now in India. And I'm really excited to see the kind of storytellers that we have in nonfiction. That's awesome. And so, you know, before we open up to questions and all that, talk a little bit about your, your process. So when you are uh, either in writing mode or if you're looking for projects, I don't know if you kind of solicit scripts or not, but what are you looking for? What do you, what attracts you to a story? What, what kind of lights your, your director kind of fire with the story? It depends where I am, uh, you know, mentally at that given point, you know, in terms of what what is what is exciting me, what is something that I want to speak about. Uh, it could be emotionally, uh, you know, politically, what do I want to talk about, you know, and kind of finding characters and a story idea that fits my thinking of that time. You know, I mean, right. if you ask me to go back and make Ek Marek to today, there's no way I can make that film because I'm not emotionally or mentally in that place. You know, uh, I was in my mid 20s when I was writing that film. I was in a very different state of, uh, you know, mind. Uh, and now I'm in a different place. So I think it's trying to find a story that syncs with who you are at that given point. Uh, or it is a story that, or a character whose mind you want to explore, or it is a time of, you know, some a time in your life that you want to go back to and revisit. It's asking yourself that question is what do I truly want to say? And I think that's something that's lacking in a lot of filmmakers when they come to, you know, come fresh out of film school. A lot of them don't know what they want to say. They have the skill set. They know that they can go behind the camera. They know what the protocol of the set is. Um, so they know the technical know how they have the technical know how, but uh, they haven't really yet gotten in touch with themselves 
to ask themselves the question is, what do I want to say? And they are then looking at movies more like a project. Oh, if you give me this, I will shoot it really stylistically and give it back to you. But I think no filmmaker, or at least 90% of the filmmakers only continue to have a career because, you know, they are managing to say something with their material, you know, uh, Otherwise, I, I always recommend advertising as a more uh, lucrative career. You know, if, if, if you want to do more commission stuff and you don't truly, and there's nothing wrong with it. If you, tru- yeah. if you don't truly have something to say, you then want to lean towards a, a medium that allows you for scripts to come in for you to just put out, you know. Uh, and, and I'm specifically speaking for India. It's still very hard for you to go out and find a writer giving you the, a script when you are a first time director you know writers want to take their scripts to the better right better directors out there uh you know or a producer who's already you know made a bunch of films so if you're going to make your first film you either find your writing partner as early as you can uh who has who shares your your you know worldview your point of view so you can you guys can write together or try and learn writing um or advertising. I do a bunch of advertising. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's 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 short. It's fun, but sometimes it lacks uh, the same kind of satisfaction that you can get from a long format. But uh, yeah, it can yeah you get to kind of you get to take out all the toys and make something that's really pretty. But you're not getting that same kind of personal gratification. That makes sense. Um, <clears throat> with actors, uh, what's your approach? Uh, obviously, with being a director, I think so much of your movie is made in casting and and once you have those actors working with them is such an intimate relationship what's your approach to working with actors it's changed over the time and it also depends on uh you know what does the character demand what does the movie demand you know uh, i like to uh, obviously do a couple of readings to make sure they understand the tonality of the film that they uh, you know the words kind of flow correctly out of their mouth and these dialogues are not sticking out when they're speaking them so I do a couple of readings to get a hang of, you know, how they speak. Does it fit on their body? How it how it feels on them? Then I do, uh, uh, you know, if if we do a short workshop, maybe a two day uh, workshop or a three day workshop, where we just kind of try do some uh, uh, trust building exercises between different actors, so they're comfortable with each other. Uh, then we'll read out a few scenes, block them, so they can kind of get a sense of. Um, you know how they want to move in in that in that in that in that scene and that starts to give me somewhat of a uh, you know uh, uh, it helps me pre-visualize uh, things uh, before going on set and then I do a little bit of a rewrite if needed you know and I'll rewrite the stuff and I'll send it to them and see if it's starting to sound better on them you know um uh, and then on the day of the shoot, uh, I generally call them in, do a blocking, uh, see them kind of do a dry run, and then just go for takes. And then I, I like to do a bunch of takes, uh, try to do variations, try to kind of play it up and down. But one of the things that I think I made mistakes early on, which I also you know kind of give as a red flag to new directors is don't overload your actors with inf- information and themes and philosophy and backstories uh, it's great that you know it. Uh, I think uh, if you hired good actors, they would ask you the right questions. You don't have to kind of puke it out on them. Uh, give them their space. Let them figure out their uh, method. Uh, and if you're working with good actors, you will, they will surprise you. So you you have to allow them and give them their space, which I think sometimes can be hard as a first-time director. You want it exactly how you want it, and you are trying to control every little micro-expression on their face which I, I don't think is a good idea, is hire good people, cast uh, actors who've surprised, surprised you in the audition, and then let them play with it. I think playing is a very important part of directing. Exploring is a very important part of working with your actors. So create room for that, create space for that, and 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 only get specific very rarely when it's really needed. Don't get too specific about how you see it on their face and how you want them to move their hand. And I think it gets too restrictive, you know? Yeah, no, I agree hundred percent. I think one of those things is like, you know, when you're writing the story, you, you want to be specific with character details and things and give the actor fodder. But I think it's great to, like you're saying, give them, give them room. They're the artist that's 
ultimately bringing that, that character to life, right? Um, and then through post, do you find yourself uh, changing your movies quite a bit in post? Or do you feel like you're one of those directors where the script is pretty well represented in what you do uh, in the editing room? I think I've had different experiences. Um, you know, on my first film, we literally shot word for word and edited it pretty much like that. In the second one, I had maybe a couple of days of patchwork and reshoot just to like make the emphasis on a few scenes different. Third one, I had to do some restructuring, you know, um, change of flow of scenes, add a cup, shoot a couple of extra scenes at the end of the end of the edit. And it depends, you know, um, is once you watch the film for the first time, is when you truly know what the film is asking for. And that's something, you know, again, I, I read uh, from a lot of Woody Allen interviews. He always keeps four to five days of like patchwork reshoot because, uh, you know, he's once you see the film for the first time is when you can truly see what it lacks or yeah. what it's missing. And then if you're if you have a good studio and if you budgeted a small amount for your patchwork, then it's 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 helpful and it's easier so so highly i think in your first film you may not get that chance so you got to be as close to your script and make sure you you know you've spent time with your script on your second and third film if if you know if if people are the producers in the studio trust you a lot more uh, you know and they 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 would be a little more willing and open for you to kind of go out there and make change things but i think it's also i think the one advice uh, if or my two bits that i can share is don't think of filmmaking as one definite uh, kind of process. The process itself changes with every film, you know? So you may have a process that works for one film, but it not necessarily will work for the next. And you have to kind of stay open to that. You know, it's it's a bit of a uh, kind of a moving target constantly. And, and uh, I used to think like that, oh, if it worked for my film this time, it will work for my next film too, but it doesn't because that film will have its own little demands and changes that it requires. So be open to new things challenging you uh, and be open to challenges because it will challenge you and be open to uh, kind of, as I said, keeping some room open for playing, even with challenges, don't go get to like stiff when a challenge, uh, uh, you know, when you're approaching a challenge, uh, go in, with curiosity, go in wanting to explore, know that the challenge is demanding something from you, but you have to go in with the with the curiosity of a newcomer and be like, okay, what can I do with it? You know, I see what the challenge is and I can do this, this, and this. And then you ask your, ask your crew members what they think, ask your actors what they think and see what starts to speak to you. You know, um, it's a bit of a living, you know, most filmmakers will tell you, as the movie starts to shape up, it's a bit of a living organism. You know, it starts to have its own life, its own shape, and it starts to talk back to you. Uh, and you have to let it speak to you to see what it really wants. And, and then you are serving the film and you're not the filmmaker anymore. You are, you are a servant to what the, what the story wants to, wants to become or wants to say. It is kind of a weird, magical process, isn't it? Um... Lastly, I guess, uh, before we, we jump into questions here, or actually, we should probably jump into questions pretty quick, but really quick, what if I'm a young director going back, I'm from India, I'm going back to India, or maybe from Vancouver Film School, um, you mentioned about Instagram being a really important tool. What should I have in my, in my, my reel or in my uh, catalog that, that you'd be looking for? Um, what would be most beneficial for a young director to, to get the foot in the door? Well, I think a few things, if you're just starting out, if you have a short film, great. Uh, you know, if it's a short film, first of all, I, I shot a short film that was so terrible, I had to hide it. I still hide it in my locker. Nobody's seen it. I never want anyone to see it. But if you have a good short film that's, uh, you know, been appreciated, has done the rounds or to some festivals, that's always great to share. Uh, to make a super cut, like a short reel, like a one minute of, of, of the work you've done. It could be the camera work, the writing work, the directing work. Make a short reel, let, pull people into, you know, the kind of stuff you've done before. Have a good, strong resume that clearly tells people, you know, where you were, where you come from, what is the education, what, what all you've done, you know, what are the things that excite you. 
I also think in today's time, it really helps, especially if you want to be a writer uh, or a director, have a spec script, you know, even if it's a short, short script, uh, you know, I hired my last uh, assistant uh, and writing team member from a spec short, short film that I read. It was really nicely written. I enjoyed it. Uh, so it helps uh, having a spec script. And I think um, these are what you need physically in your hand. And as I said, then you need humility, patience, um, politeness, uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, a, a way to approach people, you know, don't be, don't, uh, sometimes the way people, uh, you know, you can annoy people by approaching them the wrong way. So, so you have to be sure that, you know, you you reach out the right way. If you're reaching out on Instagram, don't write a two page email. Instagram is for a quick note saying, Hey, uh, can I, can you share the right email address? I would love to share my work. Uh, here's the link, uh, you know, and I think if you're reaching out an email, make it personal, make it personal to who you're writing to. Sometimes you just see the same email copy to 25 people and you're, you're never going to, nobody's ever going to reply to you because they know you're just doing the, you know, bulk uh, email to everybody. So really put your thought into it. Who are the people you want to work with? Who do you want to be like? What do, what do they can, how do, would you like, how would you like them to see you? And then put that kind of work out, kind of ex approach them with that point of view. Why do you want to reach out to them and not somebody else? What do you hope to learn from them? Uh, is it a, a paid job you're looking at? What kind of positions are you open for? You know, um, try get a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Just say, I'm new. I'm just new to the city. I'm back in town. Would love, love, love to learn a little bit. Can I do a quick 10 minute call with you? Can I just call you for five minutes? You know, ask politely for mentorship, ask for, you know, do that, make it personal. Uh, that's my thing. And filmmaking is a personal profession. You know, it's not that I'm going to put you on some assembly line production. You want to learn, you know, you want to, so make your emails personal, make your, make your real personal, make your script personal. And, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your voice. I'm looking for who you are. And if I connect with who you are in your work, then I will make sure that I'll reach out to you. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's great, great advice. Uh, I'm going to start uh, going over to a couple questions here. We've got a question from Ramakpal, who I believe uh, Ramakpal is currently in the program. If it's the same Ram, uh, Ramakpal that I know, which I would imagine it is, um, uh, Ram asks, uh, what do you recommend VFS grads who want to come to India and work in the Indian film industry, Hindi especially, uh, to grow to become a director in the longer run? Oh, we kind of answered that one, where to start. We kind of answered, he's got another one. Um, also for Netflix, Amazon, uh, Prime, Disney Originals in India, which have been pathbreaking uh, in recent times, how can one make an entry into those productions for AD PM roles? I'm assuming he means assistant director, production manager roles. Yeah, I think uh, well, it's the same one. Sorry. Yeah, so there's a lot of work that's happening in the uh, the long format OTT, Netflix, Amazon, Disney. They're doing a lot of work. I think what you want to do is first of all again. Find out the kind of people you want to work with. You know, who are the creators, directors, producers who are doing the kind of work you want to do or you would like to do. Uh, go through their credit list. See who's who are the producers, who's the production, who's the line production, who's the first assistant director. And if if you're looking for AD and, and production manager jobs, reach out to those line producers, producers, and first ADs. You know, reach out. You'll find them on Instagram on, or you can find the email address. Uh, or reach out to the production house that's made that show, you know? Um, so, um, so you, you reach out to those companies, those people and say, Hey, I saw this. I truly love it. And I would love, love, love to learn from you. I come from a film school. I've done a one year course, two year course, whatever you've done. And you would love to connect. And, you know, you'd be surprised uh, when a good, when we are, you know, when we get an interesting email from somebody we think has a, has a, has, a unique voice or is really keen to do something we reach out we try to get them a small even if it's a small internship job we try to give them that uh you know so reach out to people that's your first step and reach out with all your material in place you know if you want to be an ad and pm sure you don't need a spec script but it would be good to see what you did in film school do you have a you know a super cut of all the stuff you did uh you know have you done other pa jobs uh, in your short films and just be like, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, a quick learner. I'm eager to learn and I would love to just come and meet you.
to understand how the industry works. And even if I can get an intern job to begin with on set, like a runner, take that job. You know, you're not going to straight away get a production manager job. You're not going to get straight away a second or third AD job. You may get a PA job, take it up, you know, show them that you, you worth it. And then they will kind of move, move you up the ladder. And it was the same with me. I started as a DA with a very small salary. And, you know, for, for a very long time, I was serving coffee and giving slate. Uh, and, uh, you know, after that, I, I had a lot of big leaps. I went from DA to second aiding to first aiding very quickly. Uh, and, you know, once, once people realize that, that you are keen, you are, you are somebody who's, who takes this job seriously, you will realize that they will move you up the ladder very quick. Yeah. I always tell the students that, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of these things on your resume kind of get you in the door, but all anybody really cares about is, are you going to deliver on what you, what they need from you? Right. Yeah. Um, we've got, uh, Ayush, uh, says, uh, Kapoor and Sons, a very special film for me because I could relate to it strongly as a gay man who felt burdened by the pressure of being the perfect son. Um, he goes on and, and has much praise, uh, for your film. Uh, or, or they have much praise for your film, I should say. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, gay man. So yes, he has much praise for your film. Uh, my question is, how did you manage to portray the life of a closeted gay man so realistically? Did you know of gay friends or family members or colleagues, or was it general awareness of the community? I think a little bit of both. I, I had, you know, I had gay friends back in Vancouver. I uh, made, uh, you know, some great gay friends uh, when I was working on my first film, and. And you're right. I was just interested in uh, what was their journey like, what was, uh, you know, especially at home, because I, you know, even I grew up in a house where I was like, if I was gay, uh, I would, I could see them having a really hard time. And then I had to just put them in my house and be like, okay, how would my parents react if they were going to come out in, in a, in a, you know, in a family like mine. And then you, you know, I met a bunch of people, uh, but then emotionally, you know, it, it, it's something I started to, you start to understand and feel how hard it would be for a mother and son to kind of come to that, to have that conversation. You just kind of put them in your, put, put yourself in their shoes and, you know, speak to them. And then I think a lot of credit also for that goes to the actor. You know, he really made it his own. Fawad, Fawad really kind of played it so vulnerably and so beautifully that it, it, it started to kind of come alive, uh, you know, from the page. So, Ratna, who played the mother, you know, all those things kind of came alive. But, um, you know, I'm glad you connected with it. And I'm so glad the community still, you know, really uh, speaks about that film. It, it, it's, it's been a special film. And, and I'm so glad that, you know, I didn't let them down because it would have been a really uh, hard, uh, you know, thing to kind of, uh, you know, justify later if I didn't do justice to it. So, yeah. Well, you really did a great job, and I use this word with no negative connotation, of manipulating the audience so that we were with the mother when that realization came. With that scene that you have at the very beginning in London with the, the agent who's his friend, we kind of think, we just assume, I think, that he's got the girlfriend, right, until the, the revelation comes. So I thought that was pretty masterfully done. Um yeah, Sneha, uh, and I, I apologize if I'm butchering any names here, um, talks about how all of your films are, are so different. Uh, every story has some family element, but looking at the trajectory of having started with a rom-com and directed a comedy and family drama, um, at its core, again, I'm going to butcher this title, I apologize, uh, Garayan, Gare, 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 your latest? Garayan. Yeah, it's a tough Garayan. one. That's, yeah, that's a, a curveball for me. Uh, being the one which I feel has the kind of depth that the previous one didn't may, may necessarily have. What challenges uh, do you face? Uh, did you face when writing that film? And do you see yourself more evolved and mature while making directing this particular film on mental health depression? What impact did it have on you personally? Wow. Uh you know the 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 last film Geraya had a lot of polarized opinion. Um, a lot of people only saw it as an infidelity film, uh, whereas I was trying to explore, as you rightly said, you know the the past trauma and how it starts to manifest in your decision making and what it does to you. Uh, and you know not everyone got that, but some people got that, and including you. So I'm I'm thankful and I'm glad you did. Uh, yes, I was trying to explore how our past stays active in our in our life in our decision making and how how it how it kind of take us to a place which we are running away from you know it, it uh, so 
it, it, that was the central idea is like, if I'm trying to constantly run away from being a certain kind of person, can my choices, which are defined by my past, take me to exactly the same spot? And uh, it was a hard narrative for us to kind of break through to. But, you know, uh, uh, as I said, you have to know what you want to say with the film. If you know what you want to say with the film, then you just kind of work towards re, you know, kind of rewriting your draft till the time it starts to say it. And I actually, if you ask me, I still, I think I failed a little bit with my last film in terms of kind of stating it very clearly, or at least stating it in a way where a larger audience could see what you saw. So, you know, ask yourself, what do you want to say? And, and uh, it's very important. I, you know, I, this is something I truly believe is a lot of people believe that the script needs to evolve, but for a script to evolve, the writer has to evolve. So you have to spend a lot of time reflecting upon your life or reading other people's work and realizing what they are trying to say. You have to reflect upon where you are and what means, what is of importance to you to say out to the audiences. And if you find that, then writing is hard, but it becomes more meaningful. It comes with a little more purpose. If you're just trying to construct interesting scenes, uh, you know, just so it comes across as a fun scene, it, it won't last very long, you know, and you won't be able to stick to it for two years before you get to make that film. You know, sometimes it could be a year, two years, five years. There's a project that I've been now trying to do for six years. Uh, unless you really want to say something strong with them, it's very very hard to hold, hold on to them. So find what you want to say. And it's hard. Finding what you want to say is also hard. So use your time, find what you want to say. And then once you know that, write with that intention. And then it'll work. It'll it'll you'll see it. It'll work differently. That kind of segues into a, a question here from Sono, who asks about sort of the nuts and bolts of uh, your writing process. Actually, sorry, I'm 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 jumped ahead. Sorry, it's not Sono. I'll get to your question in a second. It's Murtaza who asks about the nuts and bolts of like what is your writing process? Are you someone who likes to outline a lot, or do you write and discover the character and story along the way? I've done both actually. I, I've once, uh, you know, I once had characters and a few scenes in my head, and I just started to write. And then currently, what I'm writing, even the last one, you know, this one I'm really outlining, fleshing it out. Uh, it depends, you know, if you're going to write a thriller, you want to outline it. If you're going to write a murder mystery, a whodunit, you really want to get it. Uh, you know, the the you want to put it out on, on a board way before you can approach it because you don't want to find yourself. 70 pages in and not knowing where you're going with it. So if you're writing something that's a little more plot driven, uh, highly recommend uh, outlining it, doing the one liner. But if you're doing a character exploration, if you're just doing something that, uh, that you wanna just kind of find your way through, but it's not so driven by the plot, I think you can try a draft, which is slightly looser, but I'm constantly doing my, even in that case, I'm constantly doing my writing and one-liners together. So I'm writing and then I'm doing the one-liners for the next two or three days. And then I'm writing those scenes and I'm doing one-liners. So it's important to at least have some sequences uh, figured out, you know, okay, there's going to be this sequence, this sequence, this sequence, and then you can find your way through it. And generally, as I said, it's, it's a, and like any writer would tell you, it's a lot, everything is, is about rewriting it. Rewriting is everything, you know, and I, Bob's done a screenplay course and, you know, he was, as I said, um, the smarter one to do the writing course because it came to me very late, uh, the, 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 the hard work you got to put in the rewrite, you know, and I think that, that you have to be open to. So. I mean, it worked out okay for you. I think you're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, feel like, you know, it's, it's, I, I still feel like if I'd paid a little more attention, done some more spec work early, early on, I'd probably be a faster writer. I'm a very slow writer. As you can see from filmography, I'm taking like two years between projects, three years between projects, you know? So, yeah. But the, Hey, it's the, like you're saying, it's the thoughtfulness that goes into it. Right. right? So I'm going to uh, get to Sonal's question here and then we may have to wrap up relatively soon, but, um, uh, Sonal asks how to start with your passion when you don't know the direction, like how to start from, or where to start from, or when you don't know if it will bring some outcome or not. Sometimes you fear, I think basically the question is, comes down to, uh, how do you kind of gather up the gumption to pursue the career when you're not really sure exactly what you want to do in film? I mean, I think your your story of kind of thinking you're going to be a cinematographer makes sense, right? 
Sorry for my dialogue. That's no, okay. A uh, well, I think uh, so. Now I, I think he's answered your question. Yeah. So what he's saying, I, I now I'll talk my what I understand from dog language. What he's saying is that navigating uncertainty is as much a part of your career as writing is. Navigating uncertainty is as much a part of directing as, as anything else. So don't, don't take it as a separate thing. You have to know it is part of your career and it's going to happen. It's not a career that comes, you know, uh, like a corporate job where you show up at nine o'clock, you leave at five and then you do it over and over again. You are going to have bad days you're going to have uh, months where you're sitting at home with complete uncertainty of what you want to do next you know even finding out what you want to do is hard i highly recommend having a healthy routine uh, keeping a journal maybe even you know i recommend meditation it really tremendously helped me going out for walks having make a friend circle that understands this profession that can help you through it you know have a friend circle where you can discuss not just your scripts and ideas, but the fear that you're living with. As I said, the fear is natural. So don't, don't consider it as if you are the only one going through it. You know, Pay attention to your mental health. Go exercise, go for a swim, go for a walk, and, and stay motivated. Watch movies and filmmakers that keep you motivated. Read about their journeys. You'll realize the, 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 the best people out there, uh, you know, who you admire, they've been through the same. You read about Martin Scorsese, you read about, you know, these amazing, humongous directors, and you see the hardships they had to face, you know, and then you have to be like, okay, that's, that's what it takes. You know, if you're going to be a, an athlete going to the Olympics, the amount of hard work you're going to have, or a Navy SEAL, the amount of hard work you're going to have to go through, you have to mentally be ready for it. And writing is nowhere close to that. You know, it's not physically torturing. Uh, you can sit in an AC room, you know, go out for a walk, and it's actually a, 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 as as interesting a job as you make it. So design your surroundings in a way that keep you motivated, and know that it's going to be hard. Know that you're going to have really bad days, and when it's a bad day, you just tell yourself, oh, "I'm just having a bad day. I'll get back to it." You know, so you get better at it, by the way. And you know, once you have made some money. Uh, if you can have a therapist uh, to talk to, I, I talk to a therapist at least once a month, if not once every week, just to kind of clear my head. And journaling really helps uh, to clear, clear, clear your head. Uh, there's something called morning pages. You know, you can read about it online. It's writing three A4 size pages, just like stream of consciousness. First thing in the morning when you wake up, that gives me clarity. So find your way, find your way to find clarity and 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 just stick to it. But yeah, Hoping for certainty, this is not that profession. You know, it's not going to, it's it's a utopian idea. It's not going to happen. So get ready for it. Wake up and, you know, do what, what it takes. My predecessor, Michael Baser, always used to say you have to put yourself in the way of success. And that means pursuing something. And, you know, you never know. You might end up going to film school thinking you're going to be a cinematographer and end up being an award-winning writer-director. Uh, Shakun, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been a, a great pleasure to get to meet you and chat with you and, and talk a little bit about your process. Um, I, uh, I really enjoyed Kapoor and Sons and I'm looking forward to diving into the, the rest of your filmography and, and, uh, seeing what you do next. It's, uh, oh, before, it's really before I, before I leave, I want you to pronounce my last film. Let's see if you got this. The, the one I tried earlier. Yeah. Jaren, Jaren, Jaren. Well, that's it. I, I'm not going to tell you what it is. So, all I'm right. Thank you. For this talk. Was I'm great. glad you're getting pleasure out of my, uh, <laughs> my torture. I want uh, you to no, go no. online and, and, uh, you know, on YouTube, just like how to pronounce this word and just, just see if you get it. Drop me a voice note when you know, but Sounds you know, I look, I look forward to coming back to Vancouver sometime. If I do, I look forward to meeting you in person and, you know, all, all the students, Indian students, at least, you know, who would like to talk, I'd love to meet them in person. And, Everybody on this chat, uh, who uh, a big hi to you guys. Thank you for showing up. And, you know, if you come back to Mumbai, uh, reach out. Uh, you know, I'll share uh, our email ID. Uh, 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 you know, it's called, it's, I'll just type it here on the chat box. Yeah. So you can write to us when you are back in Mumbai with your work and resume. And if it works for us, we'd be very, very happy to 
try give you an internship, you know, if nothing else. So good luck That's for the rest of the course, guys. And uh, yeah, looking forward. That's extremely generous of you. And you are part of the VFS family. You have an opening, an open invitation to come back whenever you'd like. We would love to have you. And uh, hopefully I can get to Mumbai uh, soon. I've been there once before and it was a very, very interesting place. I'd love to go back. So I, I hope we get to, next time we talk, there's no boxes around our heads, hopefully. Um, right, but with so that, just, we'll... Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, I have put the email ID on the chat board, but some of them can't see it. So I'll just announce it here. It's work with jowska j o u s k a work with jowska at the rate gmail.com so this is where we take all our submission for uh, interns and you know new new people who are, who want to join the company so you can email on that and we'll take it from there cool awesome well thank all you right. so much um i wish you continued success and uh, like i say hopefully you get to chat in person next time thank you thanks a lot Thank Bye. you. And thanks to uh, the marketing department for organizing this. Elena, thank you for uh, putting this together. Thank you, Elena. That was lovely. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Good night, everybody.